into the hands of my vice chancellor. Because, as you all know, he knows you and I down to our home. He's a man of the people that wants to be uh, known with the people. Professor. The boys which can never, never go unnoticed. You are welcome, children. of our fishery department or school of agriculture and cultural technology. Vice Chancellor of Sam, I wish to confirm that the assembly is properly constituted and I invite you to declare the ceremony open. <laughs> Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic, Registrar, University Librarian, Dean of Postgraduate School, Deans of Student Affairs, Deans of our various schools, especially Dean of School of Agric and Agric Technology, distinguished inaugural lecturer, ladies and gentlemen. On an occasion like this, the first casualty is protocol. Looking through the hall, I can see a large number of who is who. So the first casualty of assisting this afternoon is protocol. Protocol will suffer. At the end of the lecture, we will try as much as possible to acknowledge our visitors. Right away, may we proceed with the assignment of today by introducing our inaugural victory. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the inaugural lecturer of today is no other person than Professor Suleiman Omeza Eku Sadiku, 
Suleiman Sadiku was born a few years ago on the 25th of September 1962 in Okene, Okene local government area of Kogi State to a family. His father, Hello. the late Pasadiku, is a family. So you will expect that the lecturer of today started life as a farm boy. <laughs> the father was a close associate of the traditional palace of Ibira Land. And that may explain why he had opportunity for Western education early in life. Because it is only palace, palace children that are allowed to go to school. Because the father loved education, he sent Suleiman to the local school board, local school board, Central Primary School, Kine, in 1970. Nowadays, somebody born in 1962, by 1970, will be He was sent to school in 1970 and completed his primary education in 1975, still as a farm boy, that his farming was a prominent occupation, he would go to farm and go to school. He thereafter attended a Bira Community Secondary School of Okene, in 1976 and finished in 1981 in what is then known as Bishan 1. Then school certificate is just not school cert. You are either in Division 1, Division 2, or 3. He finished in Division 1. He gained admission straight away to the University of Benin, Benin City, where he had a bachelor's degree in zoology with agrobiology fishery option, graduating in 1985 with a second class upper division. As usual, he went to NYC, which took place in Kanu. But then he sat in today's Chicago State, which was in Kanu then, at Government Teachers College, Garki, as head of science department, where he won Kanu State Merit Award for his service during the NYC year. With the award, he earned automatic employment with Kano State Civil Service. But because he loved education, he did not stay there. He went to Anonibelo University, where he had a master degree in science, specializing in fishery in 1986. By the time he was completing his, his master's degree, he completed it as a federal government scholar, because he won federal government scholarship. It was after then that he succeeded in getting a job with us here in the Federal University of Technology as an assistant lecturer. He then joined us in the then Department of Animal Production. It is in this department that it was in this department when his present department was created to specifically look at water and fishing. As a, as a Commonwealth scholar, he went to attend, uh, in, as a government scholar, he pursued, as a Commonwealth scholar, he pursued a PhD in agricultural nutrition under the able supervision of Dr. Kim Jack Jansi and completed his PhD in 1995. It should be noted that during the course of his doctoral program, he had the opportunity of attending various international conferences. It was then he made his mark and decided to be a fisherman. Those of us who are seen from Tijia, we can see the demonstration of his specialty. Various capacity. 
various capacity in the department, in the university, at Senate, he was member or chairman of various committees. Presently, Professor Sadiku is the deputy vice chancellor in charge of administration. It will not be necessary to, it will be, well, if you go through, he has done this, he has done this, I will become, you may mistake me for a lecturer, and I am not the lecturer. He has won various awards, he is a fellow of the Fishery Society of Nigeria. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to invite Professor Suleiman Omeza Ekusadiku to present his inaugural lecture titled Fish Nutrient, the first class milk for all. Thank you, sir. I'll start with the Vice Chancellor, sir, Professor Luisa Adeji, Deputy Vice Chancellor, Academy, my brother, Professor Amelia Nala. He's going to be today, the, our exam position is directed to going on, so you have found time to be here. Thank you. You know this, sir? Right. For the new financial package. The Liberia University, Dr. Lansel, the Chairman, Sardinia and Global Committee, the Dean of the Liberia School, the Dean of the Liberia School, also Mrs. Udoi, the Stubbish Dean of the Great Schools of the Great University, FGM, SAT, Set, sit, sit, sent, snaps, STD, SOD. You are welcome. And to the distinguished nature of this, we are present. Distinguished professors, like I said, my fathers, my grandfathers, my grandmothers, we are present. Of a special mention. Is Professor LBC and Balogu, former Vice Chancellor, Federal of Technology at Kure, who is here to present him the Executive Secretary of the National University. She was here to do a lecture in talk on the momentum. So, my father, academic father, Professor Dimitri Sam, I think we will take today to do so. Professor Dimitri Sam, Professor Momo. And several others worthy of mention but for time. To my children from staff school, we are proud of you. I said, we are in location, we don't need to be yeah. international yeah. here. Yeah. This is food to be now international. We are all yeah. Let's close the signets. At the of God, you take our better than the Kosh. You give better than Kosh. We are all welcome. Great food bites. Great food bites. Great food bites. I want to talk. Thank you. <laughs> my department, my school, I can't forget to talk to Go straight to the business of the day. I am here to address you on the outcome of my journey so far on the academic ladder. That's what is called the inaugural lecture. The oral lecture is so important to us as academics. That was going to mark your circumcision, academic circumcision. If you, are, if you are a lecturer as a professor and you retire without another lecture, you are a non-circumcised academic. So after today, I will be a circumcised academic. Today, I don't want to talk to you a little bit. Just an aspect of what I have to do. The job of the was a big one. Oh, great. Another father is here. Oh, I'm proud of our fathers. Another part of the church Professor Mamin Sali, my senior brother is here. Yes. You're welcome, sir. Oh, well, we shall come in. Who work for the culture? You should hope I'm here. Oh, good, sir. <laughs> Just a drop of the ocean on a topic that is dead to my heart. See, fish nutrient. 
to first class we are cool for all. First class we are cool for all. I'm here to prove all this. Otherwise, if you leave me without knowing why it is first class, why it is a miracle, why it is for all, then I'm not done the job. And my contribution to all this. Next slide. Go ahead. It is the most advanced most advanced dictionary. Is that what is called a miracle is something that is beyond beyond comprehension. Extraordinary. And that fish has become one such. For some reasons, we may be talking about miracles. People think, when I chose this topic, I said, yes, the life of our spiritual fathers will be here, the other boys will be here, the life of our spiritual fathers, the other boys will come, the shapes will come, the new lamas will come because of miracles. Yes, that is spiritual miracle. But I'm here to talk on temporal miracle, the miracle of scientists and great knowledge people. Fish have become a new source of nutrient so that we cannot compare it with any other form of nutrient. Scientists have done all they could do, my fathers are here to be a nutrient, to see if there can be any other nutrient source than fish. We have not been able to uncover that. It's like the Bermuda Triangle. Therefore, they named it that in fish we have what we call the unidentified growth factor, UGF. So researchers try and identify the growth factor. Of all animal protein sources, it's only fish that can be eaten by all. Why I say by for all? By all. From the infant to the most elderly, to the two cellars, you need fish to eat. It is only a source of animal protein that you can continue to eat and eat or to lose satisfaction, lose interest. And nobody will tell you, stop eating, you have taken more than enough. Because you can take it as you do, not satisfaction. Next, please. Fish meal production in the world stood at 6, 000, 6 million metric tons in the 90s. And we expect this to increase. And out of this, what baffles everybody is that fish meal is produced in our culture and fish industry. But much of it is used in the livestock and poultry industry. 60% of it. That's hardy 1991. We have used it as supplements in many feeds. Fish feed, livestock feed, animal feed. And why are we saying it is a miracle? The choice of that word is not by chance. You recall that soya bean was described as a miracle crop. We tried to find authority to fish meal. We couldn't. We tried several plant proteins. Soya bean, that glycine mass, peanut meal, cotton seed meal, red seed meal, sunflower meal, palm kernel meal, tried several. We couldn't find. Then we went to animal supplements. Metabo meal, portable product meal, hydrolyzed feather meal, dairy products, and by products, no source. We found out that soya bean, why we call soya bean internationally, soya bean is given several names. It's called the miracle crop, soya bean. It's called the cow crop of China. It's called the pears of the Orient. It's called the Cinderella of the West. That is different names due to soya bean. Because you all recall that in the late 80s and early 90s, so that being was the answer to the world, to the global problem of food security, malnutrition. So that IITA, International Institute of Tropical Culture, where my genius and cat work, conducted a research sponsored by Industry Development Research Council of Canada, IBRC. I came, I had three day scientific visit to the institute, IIT. With my PhD student, he is a professional. And we discovered that soya bean could use so many things. There was the soya inu, soya gari, soya egusi, soya moi moi, soya milk, soya paste, and so on, soya cheese, and so on. People were eating soya bean in place of animal protein that was becoming very scarce. The fish itself, the poultry itself, they were scarce for us to eat. We went for tentis. And as we went for it, people who were cooking, when they want to take fish, they would take the soya cheese, 
fry it and put it in soup as the meat for the children. People did that. Soya cheese, fry it with meat and fish. You can see soya bean was highly respected. And with that time, soya bean production at world class level was just at level 0.8 million metric tons. That's for sure, nineteen ninety. And we discovered that this soya bean is very, very rich. And if it is rich, why can't we use it? Because fish meal is bringing a supply. Our virtual industry just came up and fastest growing industry. And animal pollution is putting much pressure on fish meal. If we don't find solution to fish meal, alternative to fish meal, we are heading for a crash and there is food security problem in the world. So scientists, including my humble self, standing before you, are still looking for alternative to fish meal. Inside, inside the hand. Just take you through this, I won't waste your time here. We just we remain clearly we need to know about growth and biometric. Because the performance of fish when fed the diet is about with measure the growth. And in fish meal generally, we denote that by proof. Let the relationship just move. Let the relationship move. And pick it up. And stop there. And under the let relationship, we always derive our and derive our BMI. In human beings we say BMI, body mass index. You go to the hospital, we do check. And today, by the of God, after my logo, right, my body, I'll go for my check at the clinic to make sure my BMI is okay. <laughs> so in fish, because my BCI is ready, then we thank you, sir. Uh, in the fish, we have to call BMI. We use it to determine growth pattern in fish. And when you do life relationship study of fish, which I did while in Zaria with my professor sitting down here, then we witness. On three fishes, Zaria down. One was native analyticals, we call it Jiwariwa, the elephant of the water. We've got a growth pattern that is very close to isometric growth. Next. We went to Sandotis Chong. This is a fish we call Mugu Pipi, the wicked fish. Because it can use this spine to destroy anybody that attempts to catch it. We also found out that the growth is very close also to isometric because the bee is able to take. It's actually telling there, you can see. I don't go to my mathematics. Go next, please. Then the next one, the last one, which I want to master, was Cytrodo Dalilos. This is the fish we call the white tilapia. Very passionate, very. From Zayadan. I would call that the growth was also isometric. You can see that the three, the, the two were very isometric, and one was negatively asymmetric. That is the Cytrodo shell. The Cytrodo Dalilos were asymmetric because they had the B value of three. Why? Why that of the cause was just 2.6. You don't tell it. So that one is negative and yeah. Good. And next thing. Then we have another aspect of growth we will also look at. We are discussing it. Buy the After taking food, where we food go to? We call it energy budget. You take food in, it goes through the digestive system, it goes into the blood, into the tissue, the metabolite, for so many things. We need to know about this. The dark difference between the white and the black. They take food that much of it will go into the tissue. But in Africa, we take things that have no food value that much of you will come out as weaker material. And that's why we don't do better, we don't grow better than new things. Next, please. Next, let's go to the yeah. Okay. At this point, we call the schematic energy pathway in fish. From ingestion of food to digestion of food to the metabolization of food. When you do all that, it gets to the tissue where they are broken for growth, for body repair for the production and for specific dynamic action. Specific dynamic action is whatever you are doing, that energy you need to do it. What you do it you need some energy to do that. That is what you call specific dynamic action energy. That is budget for energy for you. If you don't have this in the right place, at the right time, you are not going to grow well. You will see that in fish. Go ahead, please. Then, why do we say fish are first class frequencies? We all know that before you say a fish is first class, you must look at the position. The sitting, isolation, losing, metaoli, fella elani, tiskofan, balu. They must be there. If they are not there, that food substance is not first class. So you can now know what we call first class nutrient fish. It's called a novel in 1970 documented the composition of fish. And I went further in terms of my research with my prof. Those document the, the composition of these three fish 
species. And what came about the finding is that native neoticals was to put and we used to classify fish. We used to say this fish is protein fish, this one is fatty fish, this one is lean fish. So it's not that native neoticals was actually a protein fish. It was more important. Whereas for those fish shore and for those that you know, were more fatty fish, but they have more fat than protein. And even if you know these fishes, when you taste them, Sartorian, Gaios, and Sidotis and, and, and Shaw, they are they taste better than this is a little And why is that so? Because of liquids, aromatic, which you get in liquids, which you don't get in protein. Then, next is, we did that work in 1991, with the device of publish. First class protein was have all the 10 amino acids that we call them starting quality in terms of amino acids. And at this time, I'm ready. Let's see. Let's start with the table. However, we have lysine and metal B that somehow they might be there for plant protein, but body processing they are lost due to what we call brown layer reaction or male reaction. Lysine is lost, but you cannot take so that you're wrong because of what? ALF. I know that I see your mind. That is 15 nitrogen. Some of you. That's why you are disclosing to your box. Any wrong, I say, I will take it. If you are wrong at dosing it, you lose a good value. You don't know what you are going to show. Then it has done what we are told here again to produce it. Let's see. You can see among the population of fishes called from Zagal Dam in the dry season and the rainy season. If you look at it, you look at the two critical amino acids you mentioned. Like, and this is compared with other products that I wanted to try. We will try other products with fishing. So we'll see whether any of them can take the of fishing. We tried, as documented by Lowell, 1991. We tried soybean, the popular one. We tried peanut, we tried tortoises. And while I was doing this, I had to decide to contact the diet team. In fact, they sent all their publications on their soybean plantation project by the RC to me in the UK in 1991, in 1993. And uh, when I did the providing what I had for so that thing, which is to sort that from, from our authors, Lower 1991, then I had my own fish meal, Utoi, who went ahead to complain what we call EAAI. That is Essential Ammonia Acid Index. Or another, another way of calling it, Independent, indispensable amino acid index. Amino acid cannot do without the essential amino acids. When we did that, then we went ahead to calculate the chemical score. The chemical score is to look at the most limited amino acid related to the requirement as chemical score. Yes. We went on the EAAI. When we did the calculation for the EAAI, which is simply find the arithmetic mean of all the 10 amino acids as a percentage. That's what is called uh, EAAI. When I did that was where I did, look at that was where I did, 101.90. Look at that of peanut, 85.50. That of what is it, 76.20. That of uh, being fish meal, 100. Because we use fish meal as a standard, so it has to be 100. But you can see that say, where I did, not it. But this is not, there's no significant difference. But the other two, the peanut and the quantity, were far far below. So it's by this, you probably say that so a bean can stand the place of the tissue by chemical score and EAAI formula. Go ahead, please. Next slide. Then what about first class lipids? We talk about first class protein. What about first class lipids? Fish meal, fish lipid in particular, is very high in what we call saturates. The good lipids. The good lipids are saturates. In, in fish meal, you have enough of essential fatty acids, and these are little learning, little learning and cardiogenic acids. These are very unsaturated fatty acids, but they poof up. Then, in addition, there are what we call poof up, highly unsaturated fatty acids. They are in cosanoids. You know, they are in greater data. Poof ups and poof ups are highly acceptable to the human body. Very useful to the body. For the elderly, Fish meal or fish oil or lipid is also very rich in omega 3 and omega 6 fatty acids. And the former has the ability to reduce the risk of cancer. 
that is if you have the omega 3 fatty acid present in your lipid so the risk of cancer will be reduced both breast cancer and prostate cancer will be reduced I also want to say the next question on this there is something special about fish meal which you must know to do fish meal has what we call an anti-cholesterol in and after the cholesterol in fish meal, which is not found in any other organ, is called prostaglandin. Prostaglandin is an anti cholesterol, which is when you classify your lipid, and glycerol based lipid, and glycerol lipid, under glycerol based lipid, you have the simple lipid, where you have the wax and oil, under the compound lipid, you have the, you have the uh, phospholipid and uh, le lexicity. These are the compound lipids, under glycerol based lipid. When you talk of, of non-glycerol based lipids on the other side, that's where you have the steroids, both anabolic and catabolic steroids. Cholesterol is a lipid. Cholesterol is a lipid. But what it does is to break down the cholesterol. Like this is here, so I have to be careful about that chemistry. <laughs> so, the next thing again is that the fish lipid is a very good lipid because it is high in this KDL. There are cholesterol that we call good cholesterol. They are very needs of the level of cholesterol. But this cholesterol that your body needs, it generates itself. The extra you take in your animal food supplement is a problem to your body. That's why you get from animal protein supplement. Except fish, except fish. Fish will do the opposite. That's according to Gilo. Gilo 94 is a short book, meal that kills. Meal that kills the Gilo. How do you do? When you also look at the condom cholesterol stagnated fatty index of different lipids, just as we did the index for protein, we also use this formula for the index for lipids, we find out that fish is relatively low. And when you are low on this index, that means it's a good lipid. Next thing. The implementation of fish at all. We use fish as fish food. We all know that per what we we'll talk of, per capita per good protein production, protein that you need in a day. It's not more than 15 kg. You don't realize that 15 kg, all that must cost But in Nigeria, we don't get it. That's the final national federal program of food security in 2005, which I corrupted for the FAU. Next, please. Then, you see that fish is also good for adults. But here in this part of the world, in Nigeria, we take more of smoked fish, dried fish, fish. There are other sources which we don't take, like fish fillets. Fish sausage, fish burger, fish meat, fish finger, fish cake, fish stick, fish sauce, fish paste, taken by others in Europe and Asia. <laughs> Next, please. Next. There is no fat fish. We don't have fish and fishes that are not edible to man as direct food. But what do we do? We process them and plow them back as fish meal to animal, to fish, to livestock, and we get better results. So we'll throw them away. That's what we call industrial fish. And they are produced during the industrial process of production. Fish meat using the press. Let's see that press quickly. Look at the press there. The engineers will hear me out. You have the raw fish coming in, going to the press. The raw fish will be broken into the water, press it and move the water. And you are concentrating the other nutrients, protein, liquid, and light. And from the water, you can further remove the pure water out of it. And what you have is called the fish report. Taking even in Russia as drink, like alcohol. Then you have the solid material that you process as pressed cake and fish meal for fish meal industry. That's this. You have world fish meal production statistics showing that in countries like Peru, Chile are the greatest producer of fish meal, even like the UK and Japan. Next, please. You get your fish meal. You can say UK is not producing more, but I call it one UK, but they consume more than what they are producing. Next, please. And Africa happens to be one of those consuming fish meal and producing almost nothing. So there is a potential for you to not study on in fish meal production. The export of fish meal, to export fish meal, Peru, Chile, they are still eating. And to import fish meal, go ahead, you can see UK is there, Africa is there, importing fish meal. Then fish meat animal and fish fish. In fish protein, we have the amino acid there, and we are able to use this just 10% in agriculture industry and 60% in poultry industry. Next please. How do we do what do we do to replace fish meat? We need to substitute it. 